Hey everybody, this is Becky from This Reading Mama. Today I wanted to talk about the term orthographic mapping. Now that term itself sounds very textbooky and kind of scary, doesn't it? I know it did the first time I read about it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to explicitly teach orthographic mapping to your beginning or your struggling readers using three different phonics patterns, CVC, silent E words, and vowel team words. It may sound something like this. Today we're going to learn the steps of mapping a word. Let's get started. Let's look at the picture. What is the picture showing you? It's a cat. That's right. Say the word cat and you would encourage your learners to say the word. All right. Now we're going to say the word aloud again, and we're going to stretch out the sounds in the word k at and encourage your learners to do the very same thing. Now we're going to count the sounds we hear in the word. And I think it's very helpful if we use chips or counters to help us count the words. And we're going to stretch out the word very slowly like we did. And for each sound we hear, we're going to push a chip forward like this. So how many sounds do we have in the word? That's right, we have three sounds. Now we're going to use letters to map the sounds we hear in the word cat. All right, we know we have three sounds. Now we need to use letters to represent each sound. We're going to start with the first sound. What sound do you hear at the beginning of the word? And of course the answer would be k. All right, well, what letter do we use to represent that sound? And we're going to say it's a C. That's right, so let's move that chip out of the way and put a C in the first box. Now, what sound comes next in the word? And here is where you encourage your learners to stretch the word again. K, A, K, A. Oh, we hear an A sound. Well, what letter should we write for that A sound? And of course, the answer is an A. So we move that chip and we're going to write an A in the next box. So here you can see we're connecting sounds to letters. All right, we have one more sound in the word. What's the last sound we hear in the word cat? That's right, we hear a T. What letter represents the T sound? And of course it's a T. So we're going to move that last chip out of the way in the third box and we're going to put a T. Now let's read the word that we've made. And when we read words, we're going to start with the first letter and blend all the sounds together. Let's try it. K -a cat. Cat is the word that we have spelled. All right, let's try a word with a silent E pattern now. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a silent E pattern word. All right. It might sound something like this. What is the picture showing us? Some people could call this a bathrobe, but we're going to just use the shorter word robe. Say robe. Encourage your learners to say it. All right, now we're going to stretch out the sounds. Robe. And now we're going to count the sounds we hear in the word, and we're going to use counters to help us as we stretch out the sounds in the word. R robe. All right. So how many sounds do we have in the word robe? That's right. We have three. Now we're going to use letters to map the sounds we hear in the boxes. Let's start with the first sound. So what sound do we hear at the beginning of robe? R. That's right. What letter do we use to represent that sound? Yes, it's the letter R. So let's move the first chip out of the way and put an R in the first box. Now what sound comes next in the word robe? Mm -hmm. We hear an O sound. Well, what's one letter we can use to represent that long O sound? Yes, an O. Very good. We're going to put an O in the next box. All right. Now what's the last sound you hear in the word robe? Yes, we hear a B. What letter do we use to represent the B? 
Yes, let's put a B in the next box. But, you know, we have a problem now. Because if we just put a B in that last space, we don't have the word robe. We have the word rob. Hmm. There must be a silent letter we're missing after the B. Hmm. What's a silent letter we can put behind the B that's going to help the O make its long sound? Oh, you got it. It's a silent E. So we're going to put the B and the E together in the last box since they represent just one sound in the word B. Now let's read the word we made. And of course, we're going to start with the first letter and blend all the sounds together. Let's try it. Robe. Robe. Robe is our word. All right. Let's try one more word and we're going to say the, the word out loud. Some people might call this a road, but we're going to call this a street. So say street. Now we're going to stretch out the sounds we hear. We're going to say the word very slowly. Street. All right. Now we're going to count the sounds that we hear in the word. And we're going to, again, we're going to use counters to help us. So we've got st, r, e, t. Oh my goodness. How many sounds in the word? Yes, we've got five sounds in this word. All right. Now we need to use letters to help us map the sounds we hear in, the bo in these boxes here. All right, what sound do we hear at the very beginning of this word? Street. That's right, we hear s. Well, what letter do we use to represent that sound? That's right, it's the letter S. Let's move the first chip and put an S in the first box. Now let's see what sound comes next in the word. Let's stretch it out really slowly. Street. It's kind of hidden in there. Can you hear it? Street. Good, it is a T or a T sound, sorry, it's a T sound. And this is a great point here. If your learners shout out the letter at this point, you wanna encourage them to tell you the sound. We'll get to letters in a minute. So we would say it would be a T. What letter represents T? Yes, it's the letter T. So we're gonna move the next chip and we're gonna write a T. We have three sounds to go. What's the next sound we hear in the word street? It's another hidden, kind of hidden one. We got to say it really slowly. Street. Did you hear it? It's the R sound. That's right. And how do we spell that? What letter do we use? That's right, an R. Let's put an R in the third box. All right. What's the next sound we hear in the word street? Very good. We do hear that E. That makes the long sound. Now we're going to use a vowel team. So two vowels together to make a sound. So let's look at our phonics or our sound wall. There's a several ways we can represent that long E sound. So what are they? And at this point, you might get your learners to, to list off them like an E, 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 A, different patterns that can spell E. And if you have the sound or the phonics wall, you can reference it by saying something like, Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. It's the same way you spell E in the word B. Now, I use the word B because that's what's on my phonics wall. It's a picture of a B with the EE -E with it. And that would give them the clue that, yes, it is EE. -E. So we're going to write EE -E in the same box. And we're putting them together because they represent just one sound in the word. All right, let's finish that word. What is the last sound in the word street? Oh, I do hear it too. It's another T. So let's stick a T at the end of the word. All right. Now we're going to read the word together and we're going to start way over there at the beginning and we're going to blend all the sounds together. Street, street, street. Excellent. So that's just a step by step explicit way to teach three different phonics patterns with orthographic mapping. Now, if you're looking for even more mapping resources, you will want to check out our Orthographic Mapping Puzzles Bundle. It has over 400 puzzles as well as five bonus presentations similar to the one in this video, but they're for CVC words, short vowel words, silent E words, R controlled words, and vowel teams. 
These presentations, like the one you just saw, are exclusive to the bundle. And if you're looking for a particular phonics pattern, just you just want one or two of them, each pack is also offered separately. You'll find the link to this bundle in the video below. And from that link, you can find the individual packs as well as links to my TPT shop. Thank you so much for joining me at This Reading Mama, where you'll find hands-on learning for home or school.